My name is Camila and today I'll be talking to you about input and output devices. An input device is a device that is used to key in data to a computer. Here are a couple examples. We have keyboards. These are super common. In fact, I use them to make these slides. They usually input text, numbers, letters, etc. And if you look at the top of your keyboard, chances are the first six alphabets you'll see are Q, W, E, R, T, Y, which means your keyboard is in layout QWERTY. There are a couple other layouts, but they are less common. Numerate keypads. These only contain numbers. That's all. 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 7, 8, 9. And then we have ergonomic keyboards. These keyboards are designed to reduce health risks that are related to standard typical keyboards. That's why their shape is like that. So their shape is so that your hands are in a more comfortable and less awkward position. So some health risks that are related to standard keyboards are carpal tunnel syndrome and repetitive strain injury, also known as RSI. We have concept keyboards, which are used in situations where you just need to repeat the same phrases and icons over and over. Okay, pointer devices. These are used to position the cursor, this guy, on the computer screen. We have a touchpad for laptop computers. We have a tracker ball, which is typically used by people with RSI or carpal tunnel syndrome, but it can be used by anybody. And then we have a mouse. All right, so when you use your remote control to turn on your TV, you're essentially controlling another device using an infrared signal. So your remote control is also a type of input device. And then we have the joysticks, which are similar to pointer devices, but their main difference is that they are normally only used in gaming, such as flight simulators, or if you go to an arcade, you may say that, see them in a car race game. We have scanners, which inputs information from a hard copy document to a soft copy document on your computer. We have light pens, which are typically used with graphics tablets. Um, they can be used to draw, or they can also be used to point at things with a greater accuracy. And similarly, a graphics tablet is typically just used to draw to produce, you know, graphics, right? For artists or just people who enjoy it uh, as a hobby. We have digital or video cameras. These two are similar in the sense that they both contain memory cards that can be transferred to the computer so that you can transfer your data easily. So every time you capture an image or a video, you can easily transfer it. We have webcams. So these are connected directly to your computer. So they do not need a memory. So if you want to join a Zoom meeting, but your computer does not have a built-in camera, you could get a webcam. And then we have microphones, which are, of course, for sound. Okay, sensors. These are devices that sense data and input it into the computer in a way that the computer can understand. I'll explain why I specify that. Because computers understand digital data. Digital data is binary, right? Zero, one, zero, one. But sensors, they understand analog data. Analog data is what I'm saying right now. It's anything that is not binary. So here's how it works. The sensors will sense whatever data that is, if it's temperature, light, humidity, pressure, etc. And then they use a special device called an analog digital converter, or an ADC for short. So this will convert the data into digital data so that the computer can understand. Sensors are normally used in monitoring and control applications. And we'll touch a bit more on control applications later. Some uses of sensors are, for instance, if in an oven, you would need a temperature sensor because when you bake, you have to know the temperature, right? Humidity uh, for weather forecasts for greenhouses, so you know what is the right humidity for your seeds to germinate. And then we have pressure for burglar alarms and even for washing machines. Advantages and disadvantages of sensors. The advantages are, of course, they are way more quick and accurate than human beings. And, for instance, if you were trying to use a burglar alarm, sorry, a burglar sensor, right, a pressure sensor, you would need to pay a security guard if you didn't want to use the sensor, right? However, with sensors, you do not need to pay a salary, and they can work 24-7 instead of having to get multiple security guards to switch shift. Sensors can also work in dangerous places, which means you could use them and you would not have to worry about an actual human being being hurt. 
However, there are disadvantages, such as it is way too expensive to set up and to maintain even though you don't have to pay salary. So you need to make sure that you can afford it. And also, um, you need to make sure that you understand how to use it and sometimes if the sensor is faulty, it may give a fake, a fake reading and that can be dangerous if you don't realize in time. Direct data entry. All right, direct data entry is, for, inza- for example, a magnetic strip reader, right? So this reads information on the magnetic strip on the back of your credit or debit card. You know that black little line there? So that is your magnetic strip, and then the magnetic strip reader will read the data on that. We have a contactless card reader. is essentially when you pay wave almost, when you tap it, Um, So it will detect the card's radio wave and then you won't have to enter a PIN, it will just allow the payment. And then we have a chip and PIN reader, this is when you insert your card and you enter a PIN or you key in a PIN. So that would be a contactless card reader and this would be a magnetic strip reader. RFID readers, they also use radio wave signals, right? But it can capture information from far away, from further away. They contain microchips. Um, which is is used to store and process information, and also antennas, which is used to receive and transmit data. All right, now we have magnetic ink readers. These are for checks. So on checks, we have a special character that is written in an ink that will contain iron, so it becomes magnetic, and then the magnetic ink reader will be able to read that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so an optical mark reader. This will read the marks that are written in pen or pencil, but like, you know, dark shades, basically. So they can be used for multiple choice uh, question examinations. So instead of somebody having to individually mark the papers, you could simply use this device and it will mark it for you because it can sense where the shade um, answers are. Then we have an optical character reader. This may seem similar to a scanner, except that this will take the individual text and convert it into a computer readable and also even editable form. Okay, barcode readers. You've probably seen this at shops before um, when they are when you're scanning out. So this will read the information that is in a barcode form. And then QR readers, quick response, QR codes. This is for, for instance, if you want to check in at any mall when you want to enter with the in the COVID age at least you would have to scan the QR code on your phone. Okay, output devices now. These are devices that allow data to be output from your computer. Simple examples, your monitor itself. We have multiple different types of monitors. We have CRT monitors, which are cathode ray tubes. These are old and they are cheap because they've been around for a very long time. Then we have TFT monitors, thin film transistor, So these are much newer, they are flat, they are portable, typically also in laptop computers. So this is an example of how flat they are, although that is not a laptop computer. (laughs) And then we have LCD and LED monitors. So we have liquid crystal diodes, right? These are super common when in TVs and monitors. However, they do have a drawback, which is they have poor contrast and brightness. So as a result, light emitting diode technology was introduced to sort of combat that issue. Then we have projectors. We have a multimedia projector which will receive either analog or digital uh, signals from whatever device and then it can be used for presentations in a school or in an office or also for home cinemas. Okay, printers now. We have laser printers. These are very quick, they are quiet, efficient, they use toners, and they can print many good quality materials. So in a school or in an office, typically we would use these. However, like any other thing, they do have a drawback, which is they produce ozone. So they should have a separate room just because it could be a health risk. And then we have inkjet printers. Chances are this is what you have at home. They are very slow, they are loud, they use cartridges, but they are cheap and they still produce high quality hard copies. So at home, of course, you can't print out about a hundred different copies, but with a laser printer, you would be able to. Okay, so dot matrix printers. We have loud, um, slow, poor quality, uh, but they do have their use still. They are used for receipts and airline tickets. 
and they are an impact printer because the print head actually presses against the paper that it's printing out. And then 3D printers, pretty straightforward. They print out 3D objects, solid objects. And then we have wide format printers. So these are used for much bigger hard copies, such as a blueprint or something to do with architecture, right? Or even posters in some situations. All right, control applications. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to touch on this now. So these control applications take data from sensors and then they convert it into real world outcomes and consequences. All right, so this is an actuator and this is kind of like the mastermind in a way behind all of it. This is the actual reason that this can happen. So actuators are used to control devices. They will take the digital signals from computer and use it to operate whatever devices are necessary. So they are used with sensors. Okay, so here are a couple examples. A buzzer for a burglar alarm or a timer, or a heater for washing machines and automatic greenhouses, or even motors, right, for washing machines as well. So of course, if you only had a sensor that um, could detect that there was a thief outside, then it would kind of be useless because the sensor knows there's somebody outside but isn't doing anything about it. So when they have an actuator and it's used in a control application, right, with an actuator and a buzzer, then the buzzer will alert whoever is at home and they will know that there's somebody outside or maybe it will even alert the police in some uh, control applications. So that's essentially what um, a control application is. Okay, that is all. Questions now. I'm going to give you a list of sort of um, statements about a device and I would like for you to tell me which of these devices fit that statement. So name the device that firstly outputs sound, secondly inputs pins, thirdly outputs solid objects, and fourthly is both an input and an output device. I'll give you a moment. All right, so a, uh, a device that would output sound would be a speaker, okay? All right. And then we have input pins, that would be a numeric keypad. A pin is typically referring to numbers, so that would be a numeric keypad. And, and then outputs solid objects, another word for solid in this case would be 3D objects, so a 3D printer. And then is both an input and an output device, that would be a touchscreen device. Because it is a monitor, you can see it, but then you can also click on it and that would send you know, signals and instructions, so it's also an input device. Okay, so that is all. Thank you very much for listening and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.